Today is the day. It's coming. We mustn't be late. Get ready. Wave your palms. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he. Blessed is the one who come in the name of the Lord. Blessed is one who is here now today. Hosanna in the highest. Good morning to you, brothers and sisters. I just want to welcome you all to this uh, service. I want you to bring all your thoughts, your heart, so that you can hear what God is saying this morning. I understand that God has got something that he wants to bring to you. Let us pray. Dear God, we sit here this morning in your presence. You are the creator. You are the life. You are here with us, in us and around us. We can't see you. We look for a king. We look for someone special for the fame and fortune, and we can't see you. We look for power and glory, for beauty, for celebrity, and we can't see you. Lord, we are here gathered. We can see loving parents, but we can't see you. We can see a beautiful old man, but we can't see a laughing child. We can see a faithful follower. We can see a generous friend. We can see a caring relative, but we can't see you. Forgive us, Jesus. When we fall into the trap of seeing things through the world's eyes, we look for a king and find a carpenter on a cold. Help us to see through your eyes. Bless us this morning, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. I would call Brother Ben to come and read the word of God from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. 11. Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. Thank you. Morning, family. It's great to hear, be here with you again. And uh, yeah, I hope you're all going well and you're blessed this week. I just uh, want to encourage you to keep praying. Uh, pray for Johnson, pray for the church, pray for wisdom, pray for uh, whatever God puts on your heart. But um, don't let it become stale. Just keep it renewed in the Lord. But yeah, this week we've got a really exciting verse for you out of Mark 11, 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this, tell him, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on, the, uh, cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And this is the word of the Lord and yeah, really cool verse. I can't wait to hear what Johnson's got to share with us so we'll get our brother and reverend back here to give us a message. Thanks Johnson. Thank you so much brother Ben for the reading of the word of God. Um, you know, I love parades. I think everyone loves the parade. And uh, anyone can be a bystander, but uh, it's a little something extra to participate in a parade. 
Uh, they gave Jesus a parade in Jerusalem, a city filled with bystanders. There were not men who were willing to participate in Jerusalem. That parade they gave Jesus was an insult. And I've come up with a theme, the road to Jerusalem. The road to Jerusalem. Today is Palm Sunday, and still we are hounded by those ambiguous feelings which have to do with triumph and tragedy, victory and defeat, honor and dishonor. Today is Palm Sunday, and we are remember Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Today is Palm Sunday, and there's a crowd of people out there lining the streets to welcome this Jesus to be king of the Jews. Today is Palm Sunday, and he comes riding in some young donkey, like the old kings of Israel centuries before, as they entered the holy city. Today is Palm Sunday, and some little boy who lives out in the country is the first one to come running barefoot into town to tell us the news. The king is coming. Jesus is coming down on the road to Jerusalem. Today is Palm Sunday, and the king is coming. The king is coming, and no one can remain neutral. The king is coming, and someone must decide. The king is coming, and you must make up your mind about him. The king is coming, and we can no longer remain the same. Something's got to give. Something has to change in our way of thinking. Something has to be different about our loyalties. Something has to be renewed about our commitment. If we want to be bystanders, parade, watchers, palm-waving, flag-waving Christians who go home after the parade and forget it, then we can do just that. Drop in a $10 pay, our Jews, and have a good feeling. Be at ease and let the world go to hell. But let me warn you. If you are serious about this Jesus, if you want to be a participant, then you had better watch out and prepare yourself to get ready because these things are before us on this Palm Sunday. As we think about Jesus coming down the road to Jerusalem, would you be aware of these things? The king forces a desperate decision. That is one thing. No one can remain neutral about Jesus. We have to decide. To be neutral about Jesus is to be a cross Christian. For many Christians today, church membership means no more than belonging to another civic club or fraternal order. They spend their lives in the middle of the road, the front of the bus, the back of the church, the upper level, the lower profile, the outer edge of the inner group. They would rather be lukewarm than warm-hearted. They would rather be contented with committed. They would rather save money than save the world. They would rather attend a Sunday branch than a gospel feast. On the first sound, palm waving, Jerusalem was full of them, those who would live their lives in neutral gear. But we cannot live a life in neutral gear. No one living in a neutral gear ever moved forward or climbed a hill or had a dream or caught a vision. There comes a time for every person to make a decision. Palm Sunday is a reminder that Jesus confronted Jerusalem with a decision. And Palm Sunday means that Jesus confronts us with that same decision today. Some of us had a hard time deciding which crowd we want to be in. The large crowd of bystanders who watched the parade or the small crowd of participants who marched with Jesus. Will Rogers once said, everyone wants to go to Rome to see where St. Peter is buried, but nobody wants to live like him. Many people would like to go to the Holy Land, to Israel, to see where Jesus lived, but so many people would not let him live in their hearts. Almost every person in this country believes in God, but how many people really put God first in their lives? Palm Sunday means Jesus confronts us with a choice, a desperate decision, then something else. The king requires our dedicated devotion. If we make a decision for Jesus, then we are giving our dedicated devotion. That is what it makes to take, takes to be a Christian in today's world. It was that way from the beginning. Those two disciples were there with him. Jesus did not face Jerusalem alone. They were with him, not as tag alongs, but as his follow, loyal followers, willing to face Jerusalem with him. It is true they did not understand all that was going on. It is true they would not be able to stand up under the stress of that week. They would sleep, deny, betray, hide, and lose their faith. 
but they were there and they were devoted to Jesus. They dedicated their lives to him. That is what Palm Sunday requires of us. It is as difficult to be a Christian today as it has ever been. The followers of Jesus have always been a minority. We are in the minority today, and there are so many things today which compete for our attention. We are bombarded by day in, day after with the idea that we can be happy, satisfied, forever young and beautiful and well-adjusted children, and they never have had been indigestion, gray hair, headaches, or a ring around the collar if we will just spend our money on all this stuff. That is a lie. That is a lie. We are told that our status, our value, our reputation, our worth is found in what we eat, drink, we drive, and where we travel for fabulous vacations. It is a lie. I think I read in the New Testament about a man who filled up his barns and then tore them down to build new ones, to fill up again. Then he said to himself, I have made it. Jesus said that man was a fool. Jesus offers the only alternative to the philosophy of a society gone, made of amazing things that is a new center to our existence, which put Christ and the kingdom of God above everything else. Jesus offered Jerusalem that choice on that first palm waving. That choice is before us today. We can choose to be dedicated disciples who devote all we are to Christ in the kingdom. We can choose to sing the song and live the life of dedicated devotion. That choice is before us today. On this Palm Sunday, then something else. The king offers a dangerous destiny. That is the third thing. If we make a decision for Jesus, and give him our dedicated devotion, then we are head for trouble. It does not solve all our problems. It could create more. It does not make life easy. It makes more things difficult. It does not make things simple. It makes some things more complicated. It does not bring reward of riches. It costs us everything. It does not assure us of anything miraculous. It leaves us to struggle with the mundane. It is dangerous to be a Christian. Jesus had spelled out what it means, deny yourself, take up the cross and follow me. He had been telling the disciples all along that he was going to Jerusalem to face the cross and there would be a cross for them. As they got closer to Jerusalem, James and John came up to Jesus and asked for a place of honor on his right and on his left. Jesus assured them they would have a place, but it would not be what they thought. They would have to drink from the same cup from which you would drink. Their destiny as disciples of Jesus was to be a dangerous one. So as Christians today, everything is not sweetness and light. We have a dangerous destiny. If we save this king, we must be willing to give ourselves, to take a chance and never count the cost. God is calling us to be his witness in today's world. For there is no private Christianity. He is calling us to be his servants. For there is no sideline Christianity. He is calling us to be his church. For there is no uninvolved Christianity. That is before us today. You need to be involved. A missionary home on leave was to spend several months speaking in churches. In order to help people understand where he was saving, he decided to purchase a globe of the world. He went in a store and looked at several. The clerk showed him one which had a light inside. And the clerk said, of course the lighted world costs more. The missionary answered, yes, I know it does. A lighted world costs everything. Would you like to have a lighted world enough to give all you are and have? In, in, enough to join Jesus out there on the road? When the Salvation Army first went to India, the British authorities were concerned about them and issued an order that no open meetings, no parades were to be held. But Commissioner Tucker of the Salvation Army decided that what the decided that order must be defied. One of the Salvation Army came marching down the street. They were met by soldiers. The officer in charge said, in the name of your majesty, the Queen of England, I order you to disperse. But Chaka replied, in the name of the King of Kings, I order you to send aside. They stood aside. One day, one palm waving Jesus marched right into Jerusalem, the holy city, and said to everything, and holy, stand aside. He is calling us to join him in the parade and to say to every form of hatred, ignorance, apathy, stand aside. And when we dare to do it in those things, we stand aside. His kingdom will live in us and will help spread his rule in this world. Would you 
dare to do it, come join the parade and be able to wave the palm sand. And you are able to say, Hosanna in the highest. Who is your king? Who do you save? Who is your king at this moment on the road to Jerusalem? Yes, I know. There are some people who are waving the, the branches. But remember, it's Palm Sunday. Friday is coming. Hosanna in the highest. At the same time, there will be people who will be saying, Crucify him. Crucify him. Friday is coming. Today is Sunday. But Friday is coming. There are some people who are going to deny him. Who is your king? Do you save the living king? Who is Jesus Christ? The only Alpha and Omega of our lives. May the good Lord bless you as you listen to this message, as you meditate upon it, as you think about it. Who is your king on the road to Jerusalem? Jesus is king, king of all kings. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Our God, our Father, on this Palm Sunday as we come together here, enable each one of us to open our hearts and leaves that the King of Glory would come in and may we say from the depths of our being, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Help us to open our lives to the coming of thy Son. And during this week, enable us to remember all he went through. Call us to watch and pray with him. We thank thee, Father, for all the ways you have blessed us, for we have received out of the abundance of more we have ever dreamed would have. We have seen thy hand at work in our lives to bring about good for us, to bring hope out of struggle, peace out of suffering, strength in the midst of our struggles, and the light of thy love as thy shining along with the path we have traveled. Grant us, Lord, some other blessings. Give us patience with those who try us. Help us to forgive those who utter false evils against us. Help us love even those who are difficult to love because they are loved by you. Amen. I would now take um, and ask you to take your offerings as we come to the end of the service so that we just want to thank God for what God has done in our lives. Uh, this offering is a way of saying thank you, God, for what you've been doing in my life for the past week. I know God has been doing a great work in your life. So as you bring this offering, remember what God has done in your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know what you've done in our lives. For these past seven days, there are a lot of things that we can give testimonies one after another of your greatness, Father. Father, I just want to thank you for the things that you have done in our lives. As we bring our offering, Father, we remember who you are. And we just want to say thank you, Father, for the love you have shown upon us, for your protection and your guidance within our own families. A lot of things have been happening in our families. And we just want to say thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity you have given us. Bless our offerings. Bless every one of us. In your name I pray. Amen. Let me give grace Heavenly Father, we come to you once again. May the blessing of God who resides in our hopes and our dreams grant us peace. May the blessing of Jesus who rise to wild acclaim and waving palm branches grant us peace. May the blessing of the Holy Spirit who holds us through fears and nightmares grant us peace in the hopes and dreams of the dawning of Easter morning. May you continue to bless us, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. God bless you all, brothers and sisters. May you continue to rejoice in this Easter week or Holy Week. God bless you all. Amen. <laughs>